Hello lovely people, it's Cara here and I am so, so mad. I have got so many lovely things to show you. I've got some things you haven't seen before, I've got some things I want to update you from and there's some things that I just want to remind you of. Stay tuned! <music> So how are you all? I hope you're keeping well. I hope wherever you are in the world, the sun is shining, or if you need it to rain, that it is raining. Because um, that's not, let's face it, not everybody needs the sun. Some of us need plants to grow and things like that. But wherever you are, I hope you're enjoying your time and that you're getting some sewing in or you're grabbing some inspiration from the YouTube community, just like me. And if you're new around here, hello, it's lovely to have you here. Please click the old subscribe button. Do you know 50% of you who watch don't subscribe? It's completely free. I'd love to know you're here and I genuinely respond to all of my viewers um, that comment. So please be part of our community and hit the old subscribe button. That'd be magic. So as I said in my quick intro, I have been a very busy lady. I look around here and I think, seriously? Have I worked full time? Have I lived a life? Have I been a wife? Have I been a mum? Have I actually left the house at all? <laughs> and the answer to those things, of course, is yes. But I am just passionate about sewing. And do you know what? Actually, even though I look around at all these things, I still think to myself, I haven't sewn very much. I must be crazy. Because this is not true. I have sewn a lot and I cannot wait to share it with you. And what I'm going to do, actually, if it's all right with you, I need to devote a serious amount of time to one particular make. Um, I really do. And that is the amazing La Pantalon Tremplin, um, and that is from Maison Fauve. Um, this is part of their latest release from La Piscine, which is a beautiful collection of curated fabrics and patterns that all focus around the swimming pool, La Piscine. Um, and that's it's so wearable, it's so stylish, it's quite different, there's lots of innovation. I am a massive fan. And I've been in communication with Maison Vauve, Vauve and um, they very kindly um, uh, agreed for me to be an ambassador for them here in the UK. They've just launched a new um, Instagram site, Maison Faux UK. So please, if you don't know about Maison Faux, which I'm sure you do, do you know get on the bandwagon and, and get involved because there's some amazing patterns. And this, I want to do this justice because their trousers I'm wearing now, they're not like anything I've made before. Maybe I say that about everything, but I honestly can tell you, this is one of the favorite things I've ever made, and that is saying something. But what I wanna do first is I wanna slice in a bit of footage here, because the um, you can buy kits from Maison Fauve. I don't know if these trampoline trousers came as a kit, but that was what sent to me as an ambassador. And I have subsequently seen kits um, from Maison Fauve, um, they've just released one this week with a beautiful dress and you get the fabric, the patterns and the notions that go with it. And that is what happened to me in my case for these trousers. As I say, I'm not sure it is a kit, but I wanted to share it with you because the attention to detail has been just lovely. When it arrived, it was all beautifully packaged, came over from France within about a week, which was amazing. They popped this lovely um, postcard in here and uh, on the on the back it's uh, in french with their lovely um sort of description of uh their, their patterns and so on and then it's got a lovely message here it says hi cara i hope you enjoy this project and we can't wait to see you in your trampoline trousers um thank you and happy sewing love amanda which is just such a nice touch and they also included on here some of the um the samples of some of the other fabrics in la piscine range and one of the heroes of this project is the fabric. So the fabric I've, I've got, I've made my trousers out on is the cotton sateen. And it is not like a fabric I have come across before. It is the perfect weight for trousers. It's perfect for spring into summer because it's not too heavy, it's not too light. 
It gives you the structure you need for the details in a traditional cargo trouser, which I'm going to um, take you through in a little while. But these other fabrics, oh my word, um, there's a, this is a jacquard um, and there is the most beautiful robe um, that's made out of this. Um, this and these viscoses are just dreamy in their quality so please um yeah i am an ambassador for them so i speak from the heart when i say how amazing this is experience has been but slice let me slice this virginity in for you now so you can see what i mean I just wanted to show you just how beautiful this package is. It's absolutely stunning. This is the arrival of the Maison Faux um, Ambassador Kit. Um, and I'm going to be making the most amazing trousers. I'm going to be making the trampoline trousers or cargo trousers, uh, which I believe is springboard, which is just lovely. Um, this is from their latest collection, La Piscine. Um, and the the collection is just beautiful, all designed to be sort of coordinated together and so on. Uh, um, as I'll be explaining in the film that um, I'm putting this footage into, because I wanted to show you just how beautiful um, this has arrived. Um, and they've provided everything to me, so I've got some interfacing here. Oh, this is just stunning. This fabric, I'm going to pop this in the wash in a moment, which is why I wanted to show it to you, is sensational. It's, it's cotton sateen, but as you can see, it doesn't actually have a sheen to it, but it is so soft, um, and it's the weight of it uh, is just, it's, it's light, but um, dense enough to be trousers. Obviously, it's a specially curated fabric for, for this pattern. It's just stunning. And then I'm going to attempt to show you one-handed. <laughs> so I've got my, my hands full here. Just to show you. Turns out I couldn't empty the bag one-handed, but they sent me all of the items. So beautiful zip, the uh, the Gutterman thread or uh, equivalent of, and these also these buttons. These are all available to buy on the Maison Faux website. But look at them. Honestly, uh, you, these buttons are the ones that are featured on the videos on the Maison Faux site. And I thought only in my dreams would I find buttons as beautiful as this. And they've kindly sent them to me. They are just magnificent um, and they actually they sew them on as a feature to the the belt here to one on here um, and then one on the side pockets um, which is just such a lovely feature so I'm going to pop this in the wash um, and I genuinely cannot wait to get started you're absolutely right if you're thinking how lucky am I I totally agree. I absolutely 100% agree, agree how lucky I am. And let me just share with you a bit more detail. I'm going to come in closer if that's okay, because that's just how passionate I am about this. Um, beautiful packaging. Love this. And I love the fact that this envelope is big enough that when you cut into the pattern, yes, ladies and gentlemen, I do cut straight into the pattern. You know this about me. I'm sorry if that gives you slight palpitations. But I do. I sew for me, and therefore this pattern is mine. Is my view. But anyway, at least I can get the pattern back into the um, to the pattern um, folder, which is always lovely. And it comes with a beautiful, um, a beautiful little booklet here, which is just magic. And then inside, naturally, is the instructions. So um, everything is in French and then in English, but really easy to understand. And let me just come in right up close here with some of the, um, the attention to detail on the line drawings here. So these trampoline trousers, or it's springboard actually in English, um, are traditional cargo trousers. So, and you've got a number of options here. So clearly you can just have ordinary legs if you wanted to. Um, you've got the beautiful patch pockets on the side. Um, you've got this absolutely divine, um, which I'll show you in more detail in a moment, um, corner pocket or the, the, the detail of the pocket. There are a couple of options around um, the, the bottom of the trousers, so you can leave them straight like this. There is a beautiful belt detail, sort of belt loop detail, that just draws them in slightly. Or you can do the cuff version, which is what I went for, where essentially you turn up the cuff and add elastic. Um, on the back, you've got beautiful patch pockets and um, nice pleats in the back here. And this is an amazing feature. So the back leg, which I've never seen before, has a seam in it. And what that does is enable the trouser to be drawn in to give it real shaping. 
And then on the front, which you can just see depicted in these lines here, are these amazing knee, knee pleats, which again, really allow the, um, the shaping of these trousers to shine. I wanted to kind of show you, um, yeah, this corner pocket here. This is a scalloped edge. Oh, it's absolutely divine. And actually, I want to keep that bit a secret in terms of how they create it, because that is the genius of these trousers. The small features that just make it, well, absolutely stunning. Right down to the little belt loops as well, which I'm going to show you in more detail. These trousers come in a size 34 to 52. So let me just give you the waist and hip measurements there. So a size 34 is a 60 to 62 um, centimetre waist to 102, 104 waist. The hips would be 88 to 90 and then 128 to 130. So that's the size range. And it's actually the, um, the uh, hip measurement, I believe, that is the, the one that, that you want to go for. Just for reference, I fell into the size I fell into the size 44, um, but I decided to size down just one size because from the finished measurements I could see there was um, a few centimetres of ease and I wanted these to be um, not, not baggy as such, I wanted quite a, um, a slim fit and I am absolutely delighted with the result. There is also a QR code here um, and you can scan that and you can go to the step-by-step -step tutorial. That is also available on YouTube. So if you were um, considering any of the Maison Fauve projects and thought, well, I'm not sure, my glasses seem wonky today. It, um, if you're considering the project and think, oh, I don't know, is that for me? And believe you me, I did. It's the second project in as many weeks where I thought, am I ready for this level of project? So you can go ahead and watch the YouTube um, tutorial on how to make these trousers, which is exactly what I did all the way through making them. You have to, um, unless you speak fluent French, which is grand, um, we have to go to your settings and change the auto-generated um, uh, subtitles into English. Um, the auto-translate is, is a little interesting at times, but you get the gist. And then anyway, um, the, the, the description, the video itself is so clear, it's genius. And if I just reference the fabric at least one more time, um, you can see in the in the footage she is steaming the life out of this fabric to make the sharp edges, get the real definition going, and this fabric copes with it all. It's beautiful. Um, I just love them. So I'm going to start putting some footage in here because there's nothing worse than seeing someone talk. I've been talking for five minutes now, and you actually haven't seen any of it. So let me start sharing it with you. You know I'm going to stand up at this stage. It's just a done deal because I am wearing the trousers and they are, do you know what? Occasionally, well actually a lot of the time I make stuff that is exactly as it is on the tin as they say, but these trousers are exactly at what it says on the tin. This is the pocket detail I'm referring to there. I do hope you can see that. It is just the most beautiful design, just heavenly. I'm sorry, I've got a husband doing DIY in the background here, so I'm sorry about that. And these buttons are just magnificent. At this stage, I switch to a recording, a voiceover, as uh, my wonderful husband is doing DIY in the garden. You can't actually hear what I'm saying. So I'm explaining to you here the beautiful details. These belt loops are just sensational. You sew the buttons on, so the buttons are for just for effect, but really create the perfect look. You've got an amazing waistband which just fits beautifully um, and I'm just super pleased with it. But it's the pocket detail you can see here. You've got a pleat at the front and that's how you start the construction and then you top stitch the pleat down which again is an amazing detail. Um, the, the pockets just are sensational. Um, I want to keep it top secret on how you create those but they, are, they look really complex but they're incredibly easy. And again the button is there for decoration and it holds the, the flap down but yeah there's three different sizes of buttons you've got a small medium and large the medium I'm showing you there which is on the the pocket on the side which I absolutely adore and that is a fully functioning um, button placket just there I could actually talk about these trousers for hours 
Um, I'm really sorry about the, the, the drilling going on in the background. I do hope you can hear me okay. But the instruction booklet um, is really lovely. It takes you through, you've got some lovely diagrams here. So one of these sides is French and one of the sides is in English. So really straightforward. As I say, um, yeah, so start with the pleat and then you move on to the pocket. Um, I won't take you through all of the detail. And uh, then you do, um, you do sort of, uh, yeah, the pockets, and then you move on to the trouser, the the knee detail as well. Now, I imagine you can do the trousers without the pleat um, as well, but I really wanted to stick to the true design of these trousers and really go all in with that cargo look, which I'm really hoping is coming across in these pictures. Um, I've got nothing negative to say about this pattern whatsoever. It came together like a dream. For something that on the on the outside of it would seem so complex, it genuinely is amazing. Right up to the waistband. You know, you sometimes do a fly, um, and sometimes the fly can be tricky. Nope. And then you get onto the the last bit of it, which is doing the waistband, and sometimes that can be tricky. But I love how they put the waistband on the inside and then turn it to the outside. So you get a really nice neat finish on the outside here. And then on the inside, you also have got a really clean finish because that's where it starts and it comes out. So you can really, really make it. It just absolutely superb. Um, it, it is an involved make, but just take your time with it, take it in steps um, and they hold you, along with the um, sew along, they really are holding your hand the whole way through. So I want to say a massive thank you to Maison Faux for um, allowing me to be an ambassador. I'll be sharing pictures over on our Instagram like mad over the summer um, of these trousers in particular and hopefully many more of their projects. It's absolutely dreamy. I think you kind of get the gist. So it's a massive thumbs up for me um, for the Maison Faux Tomplin trousers and I just can't speak highly enough of them. Okay, apologies, there seem to be some sound interference in certain sections of that last piece of video. So I've popped a, a voiceover in the bits where you can't see my head and there is some interference in the last bit. So I'm really hoping that I haven't got any further issues going forward, but I do apologise for that. I genuinely can't speak highly enough about these trousers. I hope my footage has done them justice. Um, I'm just that passionate about them. Please don't hesitate to ask me any questions. Um, as an ambassador, I'm more than happy to share my joy and experience of, of, of particularly making this pattern. And I hope uh, other patterns in the future um, in my ambassador role or just as a regular buyer like you guys, because they are phenomenal. And then once I've made the trousers, I was like, oh, this is a bit of a different style for me. And that's half of the reason why I chose the trousers in the first place. I, I like to choose patterns occasionally that do take me out of my comfort zone and you'll see that in, um, in the pattern I'm going to share with you in a moment. But I, it is a little bit of a different style, but they're all over the high street. Not that I'm in, in, influenced by the high street as such, but I am influenced by what I see on Instagram. We all are, aren't we? And why not push ourselves out of our comfort zone occasionally? And for me, this has really played off. But I wanted a top that was simple, that was um, just yeah let the trousers do all the talking if you like and i also did something i've not really done before and i cloned an item of clothing i already have which is this t-shirt Ta-da! this is a all about the base t-shirt which i bought from a megan trainer concert a good five six seven years ago i think and i haven't worn it very much and i don't know why actually i'm not really a t-shirt wearer if i'm honest she says having made a t-shirt um but I wore this the other day, I thought, I really like the neckline on this, the nice low scoop, it's, it's higher on the back, which I prefer, and it is the simplest construction ever. It's literally a front, front and a back, because this little sleeve is, is grown on. So I uh, used some of my husband's plastic, they use, you know, the sheet of plastic he uses for decorating. He didn't take this too well, by the way. <laughs> I literally folded this up, like, oh, no more glamorously than I'm doing now. Literally, a little bit neater than that maybe. Drew around it, cut it on the fold, and then I didn't even cut a piece for the back, after the front. So the back is obviously this part here, and then the front scoop is here. And all I did was um, 
I, I pin, put a pin in where the curve started and where it ended and just eyeballed it. I then cut the plastic uh, up back up to the curve so you sort of have a hinge here. So your front piece and your back piece are the same except the hinge that you've created where you cut the front and the back. Very economical use of um, uh, resources I thought. And that took me moments, I have to tell you, I did this at really late at night and thought, ah, oh, I know what I can do. And then I thought, oh, I've got that quite thick white or cream jersey, that'd be perfect. Let the trousers do all the talking. And I was literally, it took me moments, a front and a back, obviously the shoulder seams, side seams. I haven't hemmed it at all because I'm a rebel like that. It's a slightly curved hem on the t-shirt job done and I'm really pleased with it actually really pleased with it and I wore it to um, a sort of a, a family gathering on Sunday I liked it so much that I had another remnant or, or I have got a remnant of this fabric which you, I made a South Bank dress out of I've also made a, a Russian sweatshirt um, which is no longer in rotation in my wardrobe but I have got that um, or the, I had enough fabric left to make another one and this is super cute with these trousers um, I hope my microphone's okay. Look, ta -da! I love that. That's kind of a little bit G.I. Jane-ish, really. Look at that. Yeah, really, really pleased with that. And even my daughter said that looks pretty cute. So that's praise indeed. I'll take it. Then I have to say that I'm delighted how these trousers look with my newest, um, my latest make, which I have devoted a whole video to. Um, and if you're wondering what I'm talking about, this is the Grace Jacket by Atelier Jupe. Um, oh, I love this jacket and I love how the two things look together. So I'm just gonna let, have to let you visualize that because I keep standing up and sitting down, you're gonna feel a bit queasy. But I love this jacket. Oh, I love the two colors together. Look at that, I love it. Um, it's not, a, it isn't a color palette that I would traditionally have gone for. Um, like as in the, the red and the green, but I love how it looks. It is just so casual. Um, I absolutely adore this jacket. I love all the details. So if you haven't seen that video, please do head over and watch it. My bias bound, all my seams. Um, you've got a beautiful uh, drawstring here with a, um, you know, that's just there. Obviously you've got the facings here as well. You've got the option of the zip, the poppers, which are not visible when it is done up. And then you can wear the, you've got patch pockets here, which is just lovely. Beautiful yoke at the back. Yeah, this is from their, their latest release um, as what, excuse me, the hiccups as well. And I, I adore it. I absolutely adore it. I've been a busy lady, but I've got more to show you. So stay tuned. Let me just go and grab the other items for you. If it's okay with you, I'm going to stay in my amazing um, grace jacket um, and uh, trampoline trousers and I'm going to share with you the latest make by put, put, popping some photos in. But you may remember a few weeks ago, um, sorry I put that down there, you may remember a few weeks ago in one of my videos dreaming of blouses and fabric that I was, um, I was well, dreaming of making blouses basically, <laughs> clues in the title. And this fabric popped up on my radar. This was a remnant from Fabric Godmother. Um, and I, I had a bit of a journey with this fabric, didn't I? In fact, you can see possibly there's some pulls across the back here. I didn't use a Microtex needle. In fact, I didn't even have a new needle in my sewing machine. So I live and learn. Um, but um, based on the comments I got, lots of people expressed um, their frustration too with, that with such an investment fabric that there were issues with this at all. But you know, it happens, we get it. It happens uh, with all manufacturers actually, occasionally. But I was going to make the Joy Blouse, if you remember that. Um, let me just think of, of the details here. I was gonna make the Joy Blouse, that's right. But I didn't have enough fabric, uh, oh no, Oh, that was it. Oh, I can't remember the story. I was going to make a joy blouse, but then I discovered that the, or remembered that the inside of this fabric is white and the joy blouse, in order for it to work for me, um, I would have preferred it to sit slightly open. Um, and um, I just was hugely frustrated that it was white on the inside. and I didn't have enough to face it, which a lot of you said, but I didn't have enough fabric. I then decided that on second thoughts, really the joy blouse isn't for me. 
It's got a beautiful collar feature and the whole thing was just, because it would flop open with the white, I just decided to cut my losses and adapt the joy blouse. So I promise you, this is a joy blouse. Um, but then I literally, I, um, what did I do? I don't remember now. I sewed down the, oh no, scooped it out, didn't I? It seems like, it seems like forever ago, it's literally just a couple of weeks ago, I scooped out the neckline, I sewed down the button packet, but I did put on these amazing buttons, which I just think are such great fun. I was already using um, the sleeve pattern from the Joy blouse. It's gonna be the Honey blouse. Uh, honey and Joy, I just get them mixed up all the time. This was meant to be the Honey blouse by Fiverr Mood with the lovely um, collar with the lovely frills on it. <laughs> Are you with me now? And then this is the Joy sleeve from I Am Patterns which is not a very fabric hungry um, sleeve um, head, which is, is just why I chose it. And then I chose to, um, I wanted to recreate, actually I should grab it, I, wanted, I already had in my hand, um, or in my head rather, the Marpremier Blues by Jolie Lab, which has the most beautiful detail on the sleeve with a, a, a frill and an elasticated um, sort of, which gathers in. And at the time I hadn't got the pattern and didn't know how they created the gather. So what I did is actually created a very simple um, casing. I think you can just about see that on there. Um, and there's probably a, a centimeter wide elastic in there. So you can see there that I could do that. And I inserted that um, a few centimeters in from the sleeve edge. So I'll put some I'll put some photos up here. I love this this blouse. I haven't had a chance to wear it actually yet. I mean, yeah, with everything I've been making, is that any wonder? Because I want to wear this um, just for casual, um, particularly with black jeans, for example. Um, so I am super pleased with how this turns out. I love the height of it. It's quite short for me. Um, I just bias bound um, the, the hem because I didn't want to lose any length off of it because this blouse was made from a metre of um, fabric, which is not very much when it comes to making a blouse. I did use, as you can see here, I used an alternative fabric to do the yoke. And I had, when I, um, when I was making the collar, used uh, um, black, uh, the same viscose, to do the underside of the collar. So it's not entirely just of um, this original fabric. This original fabric is still available on the Godmother um, website and it is lovely. Um, I just, it's very silky to wear and so on. Um, so I'm super pleased with this and I hope you can see the footage or pictures or whatever I took because I did at least remember to take some pictures of that one, which when you're doing a video like this is not always the case. So it can be a mammoth task to pull it all together. So this was the blouse that inspired me to adapt the honey blouse. Yep, the honey blouse by Fibre Mood, um, because this I had already seen this. And if you haven't had a chance to watch this video, I devote a video to, um, I'm not an ambassador for them or anything, but I, I wanted to talk about Jolie Lab patterns. And this blouse, which is Ma Première Blouse, which is my first blouse, is from Jolie Lab. It comes with the full sew along, which is amazing. And it is such a simple blouse, which is why it's called my first blouse or would be perfect as a first blouse project. It's got the loveliest details. So as you can see, I replicated, although I didn't have the pattern at the time, I knew that it had a beautiful scoop neck, which for me is perfect. There's a slightly larger chest. I find that if I have this part on show, it sort of equals me out a little bit better. I've got these lovely sleeves and this is where this cuff detail comes into. And actually, <laughs> I, the version I made is much more complicated than the original because this isn't a casing at all. You literally, um, you measure the amount of elastic you need to go around the widest part of your wrist, approximately where my Pandora bracelet is there. You then stretch that across the fabric um, before you join the sleeves together. Um, and basically it ruffles it in like this, which is just perfect. And then obviously you, you hem it. So incredibly straightforward. The neck is finished with a bias binding. I chose to make my own from the original fabric. And again, this is a remnant from Fabric Godmother. I think this is a one and a half meters. Um, it's a very simple raglan sleeve design. 
This button placket, which I explain more about in the full video, is a faux button placket. So these buttons are just sewn on and the, how they create the button placket is just genius. And thank you for all your lovely feedback on that video. And I know a number of you went on to buy um, one, two, and sometimes four. And one lovely lady, I'm sorry, I forget your name, has bought the kit as well for the striped bret on top, which I wish I could see pictures of that because it just sounds amazing. So I really loved my experience of Jolie patterns, uh, jo Jolie Lab patterns. Um, I'm running out of places to put things. And whilst I was on, oh, sorry, I meant to show you. When you buy the pattern, it comes with a lovely label. Um, so I, I sewed that onto the front, which I just think is a really cute feature. And then the other thing I made from the Jolie Lab patterns, which again, I've got a full video um, talking about it. So I'll just skim over the details, is the Innes trousers. Um, by jo Jolie Lab. Um, and what I wanted was, um, you know, I'm, I'm talking to you guys about, I'm sick to death of wearing jeans, hence why I've made some cargoes out of the most amazing fabric ever. Um, and these are the Innis trousers. They're actually quite similar to the Sew Over It Ultimate, tra Ultimate trousers, if you're all familiar with those. And they've got the side seam here, but these are set apart from them in the fact that you've got these amazing pockets they're called Italian pockets. These have actually got a facing on either side and then obviously the, uh, the fabric pocket in there. They've got, um, I've just got a front seam on the back, but the shaping for the trousers comes from these amazing pleats at the back here. You've got patch pockets. There's also an option to do welt pockets on those if you wanted to. And I, um, I opted to roll mine up for a, I definitely wanted to make these not workwear because I think they could easily have become workwear and I have enough workwear in my wardrobe, um, particularly when I get my summer stuff out. <laughs> they have so many clothes, but it is my hobby, as you know. I adore these trousers and actually they, um, they're finished with a facing, which again is why it's quite similar to the Ultimate Trousers. Um, they also have a sew along available on their YouTube channel and once again it is in French, but you can do English subtitles. And then I just chose to um, stitch quite a simple pocket design on the back here. It's actually a really nice, a really nice shape. And um, I will put some pictures of um, both the blouse and the trousers in at some stage right about now, <laughs> something like that, I think. And actually, um, when, I, when I, just let me reach back down here, sorry again. When I use this um, fabric from Fabric Godmother, do you remember I said I had this color fabric in my, um, in my stash and this has been in my stash for the longest amount of time. Um, it was from a TFG, I think it used to be called, something like that, fabrics. Um, sadly, they closed down. But I had a vision of teal trousers with this blouse. I haven't taken a picture of this combination together, I don't think. If I have, then I will, I will put a photo in. If I haven't, I'm sorry about that. You'll need to use your imagination. And this was what I was gonna make the Innis trousers out of. <laughs> Now this is a classic moment. Um, I was gonna make the Innis trousers out of this, got the fabric out, and I had literally, I'm gonna say about 1.1 meters of fabric. I don't know what happened there, because I would not have ordered 1.1 meters of fabric knowing that I was gonna make trousers. You need a meter and a half, if not two meters minimum. Now this, I've had this fabric for years, so um, I don't know if there was a cutting issue or something, or maybe it was a remnant I bought. But I don't think so. I think I got short change somehow or other. I'm not making that official in any way, shape or form. But I just know that when I went to cut the Innis trousers out of this fabric, it was absolutely not gonna fit. Not a chance. So then I was really cross. I was very happy. Uh, you know when you get on a mission and you just wanna make the trousers, you just wanna go for it. So then I did something I've never done before and may not be recommended in the halls of proper sewists. <laughs> cut the trousers on the off grain because this has um, a reasonable element stretched both ways as you can see there. Not huge but it was okay. And then when I got my trusty Mia jeans pattern out which is um, a trouser pattern from one of their ebooks and I thought I'd chance my arm and see if the pattern fits. Guess what? It does. Mostly because the Mia jeans don't have pockets, so it's a really simple construction and a great first pair of jeans if you're ever considering it. Um, so you've got no pockets, but you've got patch pockets on the back. 
I think you can see there in the light, yeah. And they are um, sort of three quarter length, I suppose. Oh, slightly longer, about the same length as the Innis actually. And as you can see, I have a, a pair of stretch, gen, um, stretch jeans. This is actually a jeggings fabric. And I wish they, I wish they were still around because I really like this fabric. Um, and I have worn these lots, particularly with the blouse as well. So that was a really successful um, session of making. Um, so let me think, what else have I got to talk you through? You're thinking, no, no more. They cannot be more. How can they be more sewing? <laughs> How do you fit it all in? I confess, it's true. I do sew. Um, oh, I say I don't sew a lot. I watch films with my family and things like that, but I don't watch a huge amount of telly. And my husband monopolises the telly for um, cycling at this time of year, so Tour de, tour de Italy, Spain, Tour de France, obviously, um, and all that sort of thing. Just a couple more to go, I promise. All right. Are you still with me? Are you still there? Don't forget to hit the like, subscribe button if you are. <laughs> and the notification bell would be good whilst you're there, please. Or just leave me a comment, that would be good. Um, let me just skim through the last couple of makes here. Actually, this one, um, this one again, I have another video um, commit, committed to already. This is my unboxing for my little miss so-and-so. Um, I am an ambassador for her too, which is amazing. I, I'm so grateful to all these amazing companies that I do pour my heart and soul into making these items because it is absolutely my passion to do that. So this is the Rene, Rene dress um, by In The Folds. So I will leave a link to the video I did for this um, and let me pop some photos up here. Little Miss So-and-So have the most amazing subscription service. I know you've heard me talk about it before. I'll never tire of telling you how brilliant it is. You get to choose either a woven or a stretch pattern. So you know what pattern you're gonna be getting. You also get to choose your fabric based on your pattern choice. So um, you won't be disappointed with what you get because you've chosen it. You'll know that it'll fit into your wardrobe um, and you know that you'll choose something that you're actually gonna wear. It's a win-win situation. Um, it's 45 pounds for the um, So Special box and there is a deluxe box which includes more branded fabrics such as Lady McElroy and that's 65 pounds. But you get everything you need. So the pattern, the fabric, the notions. Um, so if you're making trousers, that would include the zip, the pocket linings, um, elastic, um, buttons, whatever it takes. And so this one was actually quite a simple one because it, I, I chose a beautiful pewter linen. This is an eco 100% um, linen um, in pewter. Um, they provided the bias binding to do the neckline. And obviously they chose bias binding that matches, which is part of the genius of it. And you get the thread. You also get a lovely little gift as well. Um, and this month it was the, uh, the pins from the new range of I forgot what it's called, but a, a new range anyway, which is lovely. Um, so yes, please head over to that video and catch more details on that. And Little Miss So-and-So is evolving all the time. She's also just started an amazing subscription ser service to help people learn to sew. Um, it's with Size Me Sewing. Um, I hope I haven't got that wrong. If I have, I'll put that on the screen here. But um, the owner of Size Me Sewing has actually done a series of tutorials based around certain patterns and you'll actually, during the course of the whole subscription, build yourself a um, capsule wardrobe effectively of items that are super, super wearable and that you personally have sewn. It's amazing. Can't wait to see more of that for sure. Um, and then the last uh, item I want to show you, I only just finished this weekend um, and I'll put some footage up in here. And this amazing fabric comes from um, Minerva. Um, and I sound like I'm just ambassador for this, ambassador for that. It's just how it's happened. Um, all of these, so my glasses are really wonky, aren't they? Um, I, yeah, it's just how it's happened uh, on this. When I round things up to show you all, that's how it comes across. And it is like that sometimes. But you have to remember that I am working with these companies over various timescales. Um, and each of them I give my full commitment to. I uh, can't say fairer than that. But I have always wanted to try a bias cut skirt. I know, do not adjust your, skirt, your sets. I never wear skirts. When did you last see me make or, make or wear a skirt? It was probably um, a beautiful skirt from uh, Sussex Seamstress, which actually is still on rotation in my wardrobe. Actually, no, it isn't. I've given it to a friend, but it's a beautiful patch pocket skirt. 
but the bias cut skirt trend is everywhere um, and I've never tried one so I thought perfect opportunity to try one and when this amazing satin came onto the ambassador listing I thought now is my opportunity you can see I'm in a red phase can't you which has never happened to me before but long may it continue I absolutely adore this it's quite a tricky fabric um, it's not a tricky fabric to work with but it, uh, it creases a lot and randomly it it kind of stains a little bit um, she says I'm looking for the stains I like ironed it and the wet patch yeah the wet patch stayed on stayed on it so I, I just need to rinse it out a bit but it's different to any fabric that I've worked with before and this is actually the Grasser it's a free pattern by Grasser which is the 669 669 I think that's right it's the simplest make you will ever make it's literally a front and a back both pieces are cut on the bias with then this fabric's 140 centimeters wide and I found that a little bit tricky not least because the fabric is a slippery in a thing so yeah just take your time with that you literally then um, measure out some elastic that is the same size as your waistband and there's nothing glamorous about this at all you literally create fold it over twice in fact and they, they only have you help fold it over once so you've still got the elastic visible I folded it over twice stitched it job done uh, I don't I did obviously hem it um, I'm just gonna say right off the front uh, I went for a more of an asymmetric look can't tell you that that was on purpose I just didn't cut it straight but when I have it on, I actually quite like it. Um, and it creates a sort of a lettuce hem effect here. You can see my black overlocking there. You can't really see that when I'm wearing it, I don't think. And even if I can, it's black overlocking. <laughs> I'll live with it. But I, I actually really like it because um, I like the chunky, uh, chunky jumper and slim skirt look um, and big boots. Now the big boots are my daughter's. I borrowed them for the photos. But actually, I really like them secretly hope she doesn't take them with her to France but I think she probably will because I really like this look and then I put it on with two different types of tops as well mostly because I wanted to see what they look like on myself because I've never done that before but also I've put some pictures I have created a blog which is a uh, blog post which is live already over on the Minerva site so you can hear you can read all about more details of my experience of that but it was the most simple project ever that genuinely is everything that is hanging on the back of, or was hanging on the back of my sewing room door because I sort of round it all up to show everybody. I know, I hear other people say that too, so I'm not alone in that, by the way. But I could happily now put these things back into my wardrobe and continue to wear them on rotation, which I have been endlessly. If you're still here with me, thank you for staying to the end. This has been a mammoth one, I think. But I love it when it goes like that sometimes. My cheeks hurt from the amount of smiling I'm doing, so that's got to be a good thing, hasn't it? Um, it's now getting quite dark outside, so um, I'm going to have to disappear inside. I hope, apologies for the sound issues that I had at the beginning of the film. Thank you for putting up with all of that. Please, please subscribe, like, comment. I'd love it if you buy me a coffee. Um, I've got details of my Ko-Fi account um, in the link below. But most of all, I'd just love to hear from you, So, and I do respond to every message I get. So that's it from me. Until next time, stay safe and well, everybody.